What's going on YouTube world? Austin Zay back here with another YouTube video and uh, I'm actually driving right now. Uh, if you saw the thumbnail to this video, you know, I was driving and it's funny, I looked over at my videographer and I was like, hey man, I was like, you know, people ask me all the time, how do you get like an 800 plus credit score? Um, you know, because so many people, they don't have that great of a credit score. And so I'm actually driving back to the office right now. Like I said, I just left a meeting. So we'll be back there in like a minute. But I'm going to show you how to get like an 800 plus credit score. You know, because credit scores, they range anywhere from 350 or, or sorry, from 300 to 850. Um, you know, and obviously having a good credit score allows you to do all kinds of stuff, right? You know, it allows you to leverage other people's money. You know, OPM uh, is what most people teach. And obviously Dave Ramsey is going to teach you how to go out and, and buy things all cash and stuff like that. But the reality of it is uh, we all need a good credit score because at some point in our life, we're going to need to leverage other people's money. We're going to need to rent an apartment. We're going to need to buy a car. Or maybe you're an entrepreneur. You know, maybe you want to buy you want to buy an apartment complex. You want to buy a rental property. You want to buy something that will actually produce you income and the only way you're going to do that is if you have a really good credit score, right? If you have established a credit score. So, um, you know, maybe you're sitting here, you're watching this video, you're like, yeah, man, Austin, I have really bad credit. Maybe you got evicted. Maybe, you know, something happened. Or maybe you just don't know anything about credit, right? You just haven't got it. Your, your, your credit's not bad. It just doesn't exist. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to show you in this video how to go from either having bad credit um, or having no credit to having a very good credit score. Some of the tips and tricks, uh, probably even like five of the main tips and tricks that it's going to take to have a good credit score. So anyways, hopefully you guys enjoy this style video. Again, I was driving, I left a meeting, I was going back to the office to get some work done and I'm like, man, why don't I just shoot this video really quick? I think it'd be really cool. You guys would enjoy it. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We're pulling in and I'll even show you guys too. You're going to want to stay tuned because I, I think that for those of you guys that have been watching me, I've been talking about uh, this studio that we've been building out. So the studio is getting done. It's a complete mess right now, so don't judge me. But we're going to walk in there. Uh, you're going to see the unfinished studio. Kind of get a behind-the-scenes look at what this studio is going to look like, obviously, uh, since we're blog styling right now. Uh, so that would be really cool, too. So definitely stay tuned for that as we kind of pull in here, walk in there. And I actually think when I left the office this morning, I left a like one of those uh, flip chart sheets open. So... Um, should be able to write it down for you and kind of literally show you visually how to how to get that credit score like we talked about in the beginning so uh, let's go ahead and do that right now what's going on guys so just got here to the office and we're gonna walk in we're gonna check out this studio like I was just talking about It'd be pretty cool just so you guys know so Cody Sperber is one of my business partners um, and this is actually where we're gonna be doing the, the millennial TV show so you definitely have to stay tuned for that What's going on? So I'm going to show you now that we're here uh, in the studio. Hopefully you guys like this. We're super candid right now. You know, we're just having a conversation, but I'm going to show you guys how to get an 800 plus credit score. Okay. I'm going to show you five of the most crucial things. And then I'm just going to give you some tips and tricks because I do believe that this is one of the most important things that you can do for your family, for your future, for your finances. Number one guys is payment history. Okay. Uh, and let me explain to you what I mean. So uh, we have payment history and I'm going to go in order by the way. Um, let's write this down here really quick. So we have payment history, um, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about payment history, right? What's so important about this? So this is number one. This is probably the most crucial thing in building your credit score, okay? This is also going to be one of the biggest reasons why you have a bad credit score, okay? So understand that um, payment history, right? If you have a, um, a bad credit score, what you need to understand right now is this is the first thing that you need to take action on, okay? You have to take action. you got to set up whatever you have to do. Maybe this is setting up automatic payments. For me, I know that I set up automatic payments because I, I live a busy life, and I forget, right? So if you're watching this, uh, set up automatic payments. Do whatever you have to do, but don't be missing payments, okay? When you miss payments, they report that to the credit bureau and automatically that drops your credit score. This is one of the biggest things. And if you're watching this right now and this is you, this is one of the easiest things to fix. And I would suggest you just go ahead, you set up automatic payments and that way you don't have to worry about it, okay? Um, number two, this one's absolutely huge. It's probably just as big as payment history, okay? Um, what number two is, guys, is it's credit utilization, okay, guys? Credit utilization. What is your overall credit utilization? Now, let me explain to you what I mean by this. So, 
Credit utilization um, is, is something like this. So basically, what you have to understand is, say you go and you get a credit card, right? And your credit card has a limit of a thousand dollars. Well, the last thing that you want to do is go spend nine hundred dollars on a thousand dollar credit card, right? When your utilization is at a thousand dollars, because what would happen if your if your credit card was limit was a thousand dollars? Okay, let's say your credit card limit was a thousand dollars. I'm going to draw this out so it makes sense. Then you go and you spend. 900 well what happens is you now only have a hundred dollar limit left on that card okay and you now have 90 percent okay credit card utilization okay so you have 90 percent credit card utilization and your credit card companies and your credit bureau is going to look at this and they're not going to like this okay having a high utilization rate is something you don't want it's going to be difficult to get loans it's going to be difficult to get your next credit card and they're not going to give you an increase okay they're not going to give you an increase in your your overall credit uh, limit, right? Because they, they see that you're uh, they give you an increase, and what ends up happening is that you use your your limit or the majority of your limit. Now, here's what's interesting about this one. Let me explain: is that uh, having zero percent utilization is also bad. Okay, so here's the catch: um, you don't want zero. Okay, your your credit utilization you want somewhere between one and nineteen percent. So if you have a credit card right now and you have zero dollars on your credit card, what will end up happening is after two years, typically it depends on the bank, it depends on the credit card, it depends on what it is, but they'll actually close out that account, okay, with zero percent, and a closed account looks worse than an open account, and I'm gonna touch on that here in a minute, so make sure you stay tuned, but you actually want, uh, ideally, okay, if you were the best customer, if you wanted to really get this 800 um, credit score, okay, 800 plus credit score, you want somewhere between one and 19 percent credit utilization, okay? Now, this is overall. This isn't on one card or anything like that. So what I suggest that you do, um, and, and, and to keep this as simple as possible, um, you know, because you could have one credit card, you could have 15 credit cards, right? Um, but let's say, for, for example, you, you have, you know, in this scenario, obviously, you have one credit card. You have one credit card, your total limit's 1,000 bucks, you spent 900, you have 100 left, your total credit card utilization is 90%. Well, what if you have, let's just say you had five uh, for the sake of this conversation, let's say you had 10 credit cards and your overall credit limit was $10,000. Okay, each one had a total limit of $1,000, right? Um, now what you could do is you could go charge, uh, you know, 100 bucks on every card. Okay, so you go charge $100 on, on every card. You have 10 cards. Your total credit limit's $10,000. You have $1,000 utilized, okay, of your total credit limit. And now you're at 10%. Right, you're right here, you're right in the middle, you're at 10% uh, credit card utilization, and your credit bureaus love that. Here's why, they're making money on you, okay? But it doesn't matter, that's not the point of this conversation. See, I'm gonna talk to you guys in a little while how them making two or 3% or whatever they're making on you, uh, or even 10%, it is not the end of the world because of what you can get in return, right? You just have to leverage your money, uh, the money that, you know, let's say you had $10,000, um, let's just say, for example, you had 10 grand, right, on, on total credit cards. Maybe say you had 100 grand in total credit limit. Well, what you have to understand is say your, say your interest was, uh, I don't know, 10% or something like that. You, you just have to go take that $10,000 and get higher than a 10%, uh, you know, cash on cash return somewhere else. And, and I can talk to you guys about that in another video um, and why that makes sense. But for the sake of this conversation, what I want you to understand for, for number two, okay, so we have number, number one is payment history, okay? Number two is credit utilization. Payment history, we want 100% payments on time, okay? 100%. We do not want to miss a payment ever, okay, guys? We don't want to miss a payment ever. Number two, credit card utilization. We want this somewhere between 1% and 19%, okay? That's, that's all cards across the board. It doesn't matter if you have one credit card or if you have 20 credit cards. You want to keep that overall credit utilization below 19% but you want above 1%. You don't want 0% because then they'll start closing out your accounts after a certain period of time, and a closed account looks worse than an open account. Okay, so we talked about payment history, we talked about credit card utilization, and third, uh, I kind of talked about this a little bit throughout the other ones, but I want to talk to you guys about the number of accounts that you have open. So they actually want to see um, probably that you have like 10 or 12 accounts open total, okay? Now, what's an open account? So we're going to talk about open accounts, okay? Um, and they like when you have a lot of open accounts. Now, this isn't a bad thing. A lot of people think that this is a bad thing and it's not. So I want 
to debunk this myth right now, having a lot of open accounts is not a bad thing, okay? So this could be anything, right? This could be your car payment. You could finance a TV. You could finance a printer. You could finance, uh, you know, some sort of electronic. You could find, you could have credit cards, okay? Any one of those items that I just named could be an open account, okay? So, um, you know, for instance, what I would recommend you do, let's just say that right now you have no credit history whatsoever. You, you don't have bad credit. You haven't destroyed your credit in any way, shape, or form. You just don't have credit history. That's totally fine. What I want you to do is I want you to go out and I want you to apply for a cheap credit card. Or I want you to go out and I want you to finance a TV, okay? Finance some new tires for your car. Finance something that you would have already, you would have paid cash for, right? You would have pulled out your debit card and you would have swiped your debit card and paid cash for this item. I do not want you to go finance something that you were not going to buy otherwise or you did not need otherwise. That is, is stupid, okay? You don't want to do that. That's how people get into credit card debt um, and that's how people screw up their credit. So. Let's just say you were already going to buy something, okay? Whether that had been a TV or tires for your car, or maybe uh, you know you're going to go to the dentist and do something with your teeth. Whatever it was that you were going to literally pull out cash, okay, out of your pocket and slag your debit card. I want you to use credit instead, okay? Use somebody else's money because the whole point of this is you have to start to prove to the credit bureau uh, that you're responsible. That's all. That's all this means. Having an 800 plus credit score is just is basically just another form of the bureau saying this guy's responsible, this girl's responsible with their money. They make their payments on time. They have a low credit utilization rate, but it's above one percent, so we can still make money on them, right? We can still make a little bit of money. If it's at zero percent, they don't have any financial benefit to ever give you more credit cards because you have all these open accounts that you aren't using. So what's the financial benefit for them, right? So you have to understand both sides of the coin here. Um, and, and they have a lot of open accounts and they're still not dumb, okay? So they start to see this, right? Which leads me to number four, which is the time, okay, that you've had, uh, you know, length, we're gonna call this length of credit, okay? And this one isn't uh, as big of a deal as the other ones. I want you to understand that length of credit, okay, number four, length of credit is not as big of a deal as the first three that we talked about, but it is a big deal. So if you're sitting there right now, the reason that I wanna make this video is that a lot of people are just waiting and waiting and waiting. They're like, yeah, but I don't, I don't need good credit. I don't need, that's totally fine. You may not need good credit right now. The point uh, of the matter is, the fact of the matter is that you will at some point, okay? At some point, you're gonna go buy a house. At some point, you're gonna need to buy a car, right? At some point, you, you're gonna get yourself into a situation because it's life, right? And life has hardships, right? right? You have peaks and valleys in life. You're gonna get yourself into a situation where you might need to borrow somebody else's money. And the only way that somebody else is gonna loan you their money, unless it's a family member or a friend, uh, is if you have a good credit score and you're responsible with your money, okay? So you want to do this now, whether you have good or bad or, or no credit at all, you want to start now, you want to build your credit. Um, and, and, and this is what I'm talking about here, which is length of credit. You know, and they want to typically see, I mean, obviously like a decade is a really good length of credit. I haven't even been, you know, I'm, I'm 22 years old, so there's no way that I could even have a decade's worth of credit. But, you know, if you start now, a year is good, two years is good, three years is good, and it just gets better from there. So as you go, the length of credit gets longer. They look at that and they like that a lot more. So that's number four. Uh, start today. Don't wait because I'm telling you the length of credit, it, it's not a big, it's not, it's not as uh, big of a deal as these three, but it is a decent sized deal. So go out there and make that happen. Okay, lastly, I'm gonna talk about point number five. And point number five, I'm actually gonna have kind of two, um, two things in point number five. So definitely stay tuned for this. Uh, so point number five is that it's gonna be mix of credit. Okay, so number one is mix of credit. Okay, so number one is mix of credit, or sorry, number five is mix of credit. What do I mean by mix of credit? Well, I mean, don't just go out and get 10 credit cards but not ever finance a TV or a car or a house or a pair of shoes or a watch or something like that, right? Those are just examples, obviously. The point uh, of mix of credit is you want, there's different types of credit, okay? So credit card just being one type of credit. You wanna go out there and you, you wanna get different types of credit. So as you evolve in life, as you grow in life, you wanna make sure uh, that your, your credit score is evolving and it's growing all the time. And lastly, hard inquiries, okay? So hard inquiries. I'm going to write this and then you'll be able to see it. Inquiries. Okay, so hard inquiries are something that you really want to avoid. Okay, you want to avoid hard inquiries. Now, what's a hard inquiry, Austin? You know, a hard inquiry can be a number of different things, but 
Yeah, let's say you go and you apply for a credit card. That, that typically, you know, hard inquiries and you have soft inquiries, but most of the time, uh, a hard inquiry is, you know, you apply for a car, you apply for a house, sometimes a credit card, uh, you move into an apartment, okay, they run your credit, they check your background, stuff like that. These, these are all a mixture of soft and hard inquiries, and you want to avoid them if, if possible, right? So if you get declined at one apartment complex, you probably don't want to go apply for four or five more and get declined four or five times in a row because now you have four or five hard or soft inquiries on on your right on your credit right okay so like maybe say you use credit karma or equity you have equifax and transunion obviously um you know this is something i can talk about in a different video but you know hard inquiries are something you want to avoid so really my tip here is this is just if somebody denies you something don't go apply for it 17 more times right and if you absolutely have to apply for something then you know, do your due diligence and use common sense and know that going into applying for that, there's a good chance that you're going to get accepted. Don't don't go apply for a $300,000 credit card or, or a Lamborghini if you're making $2,000 a month, right? It just doesn't make sense. So just use common sense here because you're just going to get, you're going to rack up hard inquiries for no reason when you could have just used common sense and not have ever applied for that to begin with, right? So just use common sense here and understand uh, that, that a hard inquiry isn't it doesn't look good on your credit they fall off after about two years um, but you really don't want them on there to begin with you know uh, just like bankruptcy right that lasts about seven years depending on what kind of bankruptcy is on, on your deal so um, you know just things that you want to keep in mind right so just quick little recap here uh, payment history credit utilization open accounts length of credit mix of credit and hard inquiries um, these are some of the things that will get you to an 800 plus credit score then and the, the last and final thing is consistency right so you want to be consistent. You don't want to do this for a month or a week or a day or, or, or two months or three months. You, you want to do this for a year or two or three or four or five. And I'm telling you, over time, um, you'll finance bigger things. You know, like for me, uh, I started out driving not so nice cars. And then I had a Mercedes C-Class. And then you know, I got into an E-Class. And then I bought an Audi R8. And now I'm buying a Lamborghini. And I worked my way up to that point. I didn't just go buy a Lamborghini, right? I did not. it will be like my 16th car. So... Um, the point is, is as you build your credit score, they trust you more, your credit score goes up, and they're more willing to give you loans on larger items. You know, you want to go buy a house, you want to start a family, you know, you want to just go do something, whatever that is. You know, you want to put um, something on your credit card, like a trip or something, and that's something I can talk about too in another video, by the way, guys. So if you like this video, drop in the comments down below, because in another video, I can talk about how um, you can actually travel the world for free by using credit cards, okay? Uh, I've actually traveled the world, uh, most of the world for free by using credit cards the right way, okay? And you can do the same, and it's money that I was gonna spend regardless. Whether I spend it on a debit card or on a credit card, I may as well put it on the credit card because I get to travel the world for free. So if you're interested in that topic, drop in the comments below. I'd love to make a video on that for you. Hopefully this helped. Uh, this is, It's this simple, guys. Credit's not complicated. Don't make it overcomplicated. Eight, getting an 800 plus credit score is fairly easy, but start today. Don't wait till tomorrow or the next day or the next day. Start today. Make it happen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely drop in the comments below. Uh, did you like the style video? Did you like the intro? Did you like how you know we were just driving and it hit me? I'm like, yo, let's just do a video. Let's do a candid conversation. If you liked this, if you want to see more day in the life stuff, me at the gym, me doing stuff, me out and about, me at meetings, whatever the case is, uh, please interact with me. Please engage with me. Drop in the comments below as well. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you go subscribe and smash that notification bell. And until then, we'll see you in the next video.